Hello guys and welcome back to the FE exam review series where we cover the most common FE problems that you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video, we'll be solving a thermodynamic section problem, specifically end of part G, refrigeration and heat pump cycles. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, everybody now. Now let's go over the problem. So we have a refrigeration system that operates on an ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle using our 134A. Now the cycle operates between the saturation temperature of minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the evaporator and 65 degrees Fahrenheit in the condenser. The system operates at a constant pressure of 30 psi. We are giving the enthalpy at 2 and we want to determine the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle. So what we're going to do here guys is that I'm going to give you guys a hint and just walk you through this problem a little bit and then you're going to go ahead and pause this video and then you're going to attempt it and then come back and then you can check your solution. Okay so when you guys are studying for your FE exam or when you are doing problems make sure that you guys solve them on your own before you take a look at the solution because that's how you're going to learn. Okay now the first thing we're going to do is go to the reference handbook and take a look at the equation for the coefficient of performance. Now if we go to the thermodynamic section here you guys are giving the temperature versus the entropy diagram for refrigeration cycle okay now here we have two equations for the coefficient of performance so this equation here is for refrigeration cycle and this one is for heat pump okay so just keep that in mind for this problem of course we're going to use this equation because we are looking for the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle now, before we take a look at this equation, let's go over this diagram. So note guys here that this diagram looks very similar to the temperature versus the specific volume diagram that we discussed in this video here. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure that you guys do. Now, if you guys remember from that problem, we said that if we are inside the dome, we have a mixture of liquid and vapor, right? And this line here represents the saturated liquid. And then this line represents the saturated vapor, which means that at three, we're going to have the saturated liquid liquid and then at four oh, sorry at one we're gonna have saturated vapor right so with that plus the we were in the problem we were giving the saturation temperature we can go to the tables and then easily determine the enthalpy at one and then also the enthalpy at three okay now why do we need enthalpy at three well because the enthalpy at three is equal to the enthalpy at four okay as mentioned here Okay, and the other thing is the enthalpy at 2 was already given to us in the problem. So once you guys determine the enthalpies, then you can go ahead and plug that in into this equation to solve for the coefficient of performance. So with that, why don't you guys give this problem a try and I will see you guys in a little bit. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, we just launched the FE Mechanical course. So if you are looking for a course, make sure to check it out. And if you are interested in the FE Other Disciplines course, we are going to launch that soon. So make sure that you guys sign up here for any future updates. Now, let's go ahead and solve this problem, guys. So as we mentioned before, so we, we said that we don't have the enthalpy at 1 and we don't have the enthalpy at 4, but we do have the enthalpy at 2, it was given to us. Now, we also said that at 1, we have the saturated vapor, right? So that means H1 here is going to be equal to Hg, okay? So we can easily grab this from the uh, tables. Also, in the problem, we were giving the saturation temperature in the evaporator, which means this. So from 4 to 1, that's when we have the evaporator. So if we go back to the reference handbook it's giving to you guys here okay so which means this temperature here is minus 10 degrees fahrenheit so with that we can go to the reference manual and then grab hg which we're going to do in a little bit but i want to look at three as well so for h4 if you guys remember we said h4 is equal to h3 okay and then also we said that at three we have the saturated liquid okay so that means h3 is going to be equal to hf okay and the saturation temperature at three was giving as 65 degrees fahrenheit because that's where we have the condenser okay so this here is going to be 65 degrees fahrenheit okay so we're going to go to the table we're going to look at 65 degrees fahrenheit and we're going to look at hf so that's going to be equal to h4 okay the enthalpy at 4 and then we're going to take a look at also the minus 10 degrees fahrenheit to get h1 which is 
hg so let's go ahead and do that so if we go to the reference manual here you guys are giving r 134a and that's what we have in the problem okay so as we mentioned before so we're going to take a look at minus 10 degrees fahrenheit and we're going to take a look at the enthalpy so this is the columns for enthalpy and we need the saturated vapor okay so this is the value that we're going to use so 101.677 so this is for h1 okay then we're going to take a look at 65 degrees fahrenheit and so then the we're going to take a look at the enthalpy and then saturated liquid and then the value is going to be 33.12 and so this here is going to be the enthalpy at four okay so let's go ahead and write those values down now let's go ahead and plug in these numbers into the equation so we have h1 is equal to 101.677 and minus h4 which is 33.12 and you're going to divide it by h2 which is 110.81 minus h1 which is 101.677 the other thing i recommend that you guys do because these diagrams here are very common and very important especially for thermodynamics I recommend that you guys write a lot of the concepts that we covered here and then also in the previous videos and write them down and add them to your cheat sheets, okay? Um, and then make sure that you guys review them right before you have the exam. And also, we do have a cheat sheet that has very important equations and concepts that you guys need to know for your FE exam. Make sure that you guys download it here. If you don't receive it to your email for whatever reason, make sure that you guys email us and we'll send it to you. Now, if you guys plug these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get about 7.5. Let me rewrite that. So 7.5. So now if we take a look at the multiple truth, the answer is going to be D. Now, before you guys go, if you haven't checked out our latest video, make sure that you guys do. So Trevor, our tech lead, really shares some great tips on how you can supercharge your FE studies using AI. So it's really going to help you guys with your FE preparation. So make sure that you guys check it out. So that's it guys for today's video. Now, if you want more FE mechanical or FE other disciplines problems, let us know in the comments below. And also, if you are looking for a course that will help you with your FE preparation, don't forget to check out our courses at jennyprep.com. And if you are looking for more FE problems that will help you with your FE preparation, make sure to check out this playlist here. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you guys on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh, yeah. Everybody now.